wallet. It's all of Americans wallets. Yeah, and then um, the, and then the local communities pick up the tab for the education as well, which is time. very costly. But just to just to get to first principles here, the United States of America never ever made a promise written or unwritten to the people of Afghanistan that if after 20 years they were unable to secure their own country, that we would take them to ours. That is nonsense. That has never been U.S. government policy. What do you say to that? I have, that man has been my personal nemesis now for almost eight years. I've been fighting him since he was Jeff Sessions' Senate staffer. As far as I'm concerned, he personally is as complicit as the Taliban in these people's deaths. He should be held accountable for war crimes. He spent the entirety of the Trump administration purposely trying to prevent these people from coming here. I've had meetings with him and his ilk. I brought the interpreter to, who saved my life to some of those meetings. We, we met with a lady by the name of Andrea Loving. She's the uh, deputy uh, counsel for the House uh, uh, Judiciary Committee for the, yeah, the GOP. Janice and I were sitting in a meeting with her. She is Stephen's counterpart at the time in, in Congress. And we were debating about whether or not Congress should allocate more visas for these people. She then articulated what his platform was. I pointed to Janice and I said, you know, this is a gentleman who saved my life. Maybe you've just never had a chance to meet an Afghan. And so it, it helped to put a face to these people's names. And they looked at me and they said, you're doing nothing but letting Islamic fundamentalist terrorists into our country and it's our job to stop you. Wrong. These are our people. There is no us and them. There's just an us. And you know what? Stephen Miller never wore a uniform a day in his life. He's a privileged little brat. He ought to be held for war crimes. I can't stand that man. I can't believe that you're even giving him any more airtime. That, that's the reason why that guy's views continue to get publicized is because the media keeps putting him out there. That guy doesn't represent America. He represents the worst of us. What's going on right now, however, is the best of us. I'm currently involved with a massive airlift planning operation from my living room. There are veterans all over the country who are organizing a digital Dunkirk. We are not getting any sleep. We are, are determined to see our people get out, and we're not going to rest until we do it effectively and efficiently, and most importantly, until we take them all. But people like Stephen Miller need to just sit down and shut up because he has been part of the problem for too long. This is Matt Zeller, a veteran who fought in Afghanistan, ripping into Stephen Miller, who apparently makes up the other half of Laura Ingram's white supremacist power hour on Fox. What I find especially ironic is that the people who are falling over themselves to criticize the Afghanistan evacuation because there are so many Afghans who are trying to leave the country since it fell to the Taliban are the same people who are also saying that we shouldn't take any Afghan refugees. In other words, Biden's at fault for not letting these people out, but whoa, no way do we want to let them in. Because what would the GOP be if not steeped in their own shameless hypocrisy? And yet this shouldn't come as a surprise considering this is the backbone of Republican politics, fear-mongering about immigrants. This is a gift wrapped in a bow for Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson and guests like Stephen Miller. Because at the end of the day, Republican operatives know that they can't run on their platform because, let's be honest, who's going to vote for a party that stands for tax cuts for billionaires and eliminating women's reproductive rights and pretending climate change doesn't exist and coddling fossil fuel companies? Nobody. And so instead, they rely on the politics of fear and tell an aging white base that brown people are coming to take over their neighborhoods. It is nothing more than fear porn, and it's literally all the GOP has left. Now, something especially telling about these Republicans like Laura Ingram and Stephen Miller attacking the Biden administration is that this entire process in Afghanistan is a continuation of a process started by Donald Trump. Remember, the Trump administration sat down for a peace deal with the Taliban, which wasn't so much a peace deal as it was a withdrawal agreement, which set the terms for a complete departure by US troops from Afghanistan by May of 2021. In fact, the Afghan government wasn't even involved in the talks, it was literally just between the Taliban and the Trump White House, thereby legitimizing the Taliban and undercutting the Afghan government. In fact, here's a photo of Trump's own Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, posing with Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, one of the 5,000 Taliban prisoners who the Trump administration helped release. That same man, again, whose release was thanks to Trump, is now set to become the president of Afghanistan under Taliban rule. So it's nice that these Trump acolytes are pretending that Biden's at fault here, but this entire situation has their own fingerprints all over it. 
And by the way, Republicans are well aware of their own complicity here. Here's the RNC's website in June bragging about Trump's historic agreement with the Taliban to draw the war to an end. Try clicking that link now and this is what you get, a 404 error showing that they scrubbed the site. Why? Because they are well aware that they are responsible for legitimizing the Taliban, for releasing its leader from prison, for negotiating with these people, and for coordinating withdrawal with no conditions whatsoever. Once the Trump administration began winding troops down from Afghanistan without a single withdrawal condition actually being met, it became clear to the Taliban that the so-called deal that they just struck wasn't worth the paper that it was printed on, which at the end of the day is pretty par for the course when it comes to Donald Trump. And yet while these Trump administration officials negotiated with terrorists and hailed themselves as heroes for doing it, they're now decrying the Afghans who helped us during the 20 year war as if they're the terrorists. You wanna know what terror looks like? A white supremacist, fascistic administration incapable of accepting defeat and sticking a mob of brainwashed rubes to storm the US Capitol to assassinate political figures who didn't buy into the bullshit that Trump and a pillow salesman were selling. That's what terror looks like. Not the interpreters who fought alongside our troops for years and years for what they believed was a noble cause. If anyone doesn't espouse the values that we purport to fight for, I can assure you that between Stephen Miller and those Afghan interpreters, it's not the interpreters. But here's the most important point that Zeller makes. I can't believe that you're even giving him any more airtime. That, that's the reason why that guy's views continue to get publicized is because the media keeps putting it out there. The media's infatuation with both sides is why we have people like Stephen Miller in the first place. Any rational human being could see that a man espousing outright white supremacist ideology is not someone who any responsible outlet would broadcast into the homes of hundreds of millions of Americans. And yet because the media insists that both sides need to be heard, regardless of what's right, both sides get airtime. And so you could have one side saying that two plus two is four, and the other side saying that two plus two is 11D19, and the media would pretend that both views are important. At some point, we have to be able to acknowledge what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. We do not need to put people like Stephen Miller on national TV just because another racist old man hired him to be an advisor. And until the media recognizes the inherent danger in platforming the worst people as part of their interminable effort to both sides everything, they're views will continue to spread because of that. When one side is wrong, the media needs to grow up and be willing to acknowledge it's wrong without giving those wrong views a national platform. All of that's to say that instead of taking this opportunity for these people to trash Biden, these Trump administration officials might want to accept responsibility for their own hand in what's happening in Afghanistan, like how they legitimized the Taliban, negotiated with them, and bragged about it, only to suddenly try and rewrite history once it became inconvenient. Because they might be content to try and gaslight us now, but those of us who weren't born yesterday clearly know better. If you enjoyed that video and you're looking for a deeper dive, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. It's a no BS look at the top stories of the week, along with interviews with the top names in politics, like Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, and more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, click the subscribe link right here on this screen to join the more than 1 million people who've already subscribed to my channel. And Finally, to donate to my Don't Be a Mitch Fund, where I'm raising money for a whole raft of different voter outreach and voter registration groups in the closest states ahead of midterms in 2022, including Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, and Texas, you can find that link on this screen as well. Thanks for watching.